measures of dispersion uh, continuing from our previous lectures on uh, measures of central tendency we want to also check how far or how spread out is our variable when i mean spread out uh, we mean that how or how much uh, how varied can the values of a particular variable take for example if we ask you to figure out the average age of a classroom uh, for students in let's say class 10 uh, you might say the average age is going to be around 15 or 16 and uh, you know how much is the variance or how much is the dispersion we would expect a very narrow dispersion we might have the youngest in a class uh, maybe a 13 year old a smart kid and consequently we might have 17 or 18 year olds who are still held back right but uh, the average age would be around let's say 15 or 16 and we would say the dispersion in this case that we can encounter expect to encounter is between 13 and 17 so that is what we mean by uh, the measure of dispersion now in each case uh, dispersion can be very different for example in a school uh, classroom the dispersion in age is expected to be narrow as we go down into college or uh, to grad school or masters or phd you can have uh, 21 year olds doing phds you can have 55 year olds doing phds so you have the measure of dispersion in this case is going to increase so is there a method of uh, finding out or is there a uniform method of measuring dispersion so i'm going to cover three uh, measures of dispersion that we commonly use range is uh, as the uh, term uh, signifies what is the upper and lower cutoff in the variable that we can encounter and we've already covered range in some of our statistical outputs uh, to date a more scientific uh, method of figuring out the, or measuring this dis, uh, dispersion is standard deviation it is also called by its uh, greek letter sigma over here and variance uh, which is called sigma square the reason why it's called sigma square is because it's the square of the standard deviation so standard deviation and variance are very closely related to each other i'm going to tell now cover how do we actually go about measuring dispersion in uh, a range uh, first and then move on to standard deviation now for example i'm going to look at the hsb2 data again and we've got these variables uh, read write math science social studies again uh, dispersion or measures of uh, uh, dispersion are again linked towards uh, interval ratio variables you need to have direction and magnitude we do not study dispersion for nominal variables except for only frequency distributions so we'll come to that later i want to figure out uh, how much uh, what is dispersion in read write math science and social studies a very common way of uh, visually uh, checking for dispersion is something known as the histogram and how does the histogram actually work so i'm going to draw out uh, a histogram over here right for example i've got a variable x again and this is the age in a classroom so i can have you know series of students you know so i have roll number over here one two three four and so on and i am measuring age or x in this case and we've got 15 we've got 14 we've got 17 we've got 10 we've got 12 and so on right now if i want to generate a histogram typically the way histogram works is it also has an x-axis and a y-axis but this is not a <coughs> a traditional uh, uh, two-dimensional graph on the x-axis we measure out or we mark out ranges over here for example origin is still zero right i may have zero to five over here then i might have 10 over here then i might have 15 over here and 20 and so on right on the y-axis we actually measure the frequency of occurrence right so how many people or how many children are in the ages of zero to five for example in zero to five i've got two children right so we'll have two marked over here four eight ten and so on so i have measures of frequency on the y-axis and i have the ranges on the x-axis so between five and ten i might expect let's say another set of students right ten and fifteen slightly more fifteen to twenty again it starts going down and let's say twenty to twenty five i have slightly less so what we have got over here is kind of a a bar chart diagram where in each of these ranges i have a value which is affixed to certain value on the y-axis which is the frequency so for example in this histogram this particular uh, bar 
which is between 10 and 15. This essentially tells me that between 10 and 15 ages, I can expect the number of occurrences to be measured on the y-axis. So the, on the y-axis of the frequency of occurrence, on x-axis of the ranges over here. And why this is uh, useful is this gives us a visual methodology of figuring out how much dispersion occurs in a, a particular data set. For example, right, uh, I'm going to now change this into a free-flowing diagram. If I have the histogram which looks something like this, and I have another histogram which looks something like this, Right now, this is the histogram for variable x1. This is the histogram for variable x2. We can visually figure out that x1 has a smaller dispersion as compared to x2. And why is that? Because in x2, I can see a very spread out uh, frequency diagram or histogram, whereas for x1, it is pretty tight as compared to x2. Therefore, x2 has greater dispersion than x1 in terms of dispersion itself. Right now. How do we actually go about generating and studying histograms on a statistical tool? So I'm going to take you through all the, uh, the tools and generate histograms for the different variables that we have on the HSB2 data set. And we're going to try and figure out visually which of these scores have got a higher dispersion as compared to others. All right. So I'm going to start off with, uh, uh, let's say, let's start off with SPSS first. So I've got the data set over here. I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Stats again. I'm going to click on Frequencies. Why we click on Frequencies is uh, uh, because histogram is a frequency distribution that we want to study. I'm going to click all the variables over here. I'm going to select the Charts option. I've got the histogram here. You don't need to click on with normal curve. We haven't covered normal curves as of now. Press Continue. Right. And press OK. And here we have it. So we have the histogram for all the variables, right, read, maths, science, and social studies, right? Here we go. So this is for right, it's from 30 to 75. This is for maths, 30 to 70, again 80, right? So we've got maths, sorry, this was for math, this was for read. We've got it for science, we've got it for social studies, a pretty weird looking histogram. This can happen when uh, the ranges on the x-axis are very small. For example, over here we can see it's very small and there's probably no observation coming in between, you know, just around 50 itself. Right? We may want to keep slightly larger ranges. But anyhow, we've got the histogram for all of our observations over now in uh, SPSS. If I look at Statistica, right, I'm going to go to Select Statistics, Basic Statistics, Descriptive Stats again, press OK. And there's an option here, summary graphs, uh, sorry, uh, histograms. I'm going to select, first I'll select the variables. I want all the variables. Select histograms. And here we go. So we've got histograms for all through all the five subjects. Read, write, math, science, social studies. Right. Similarly, I'm going to now move on to SAS. Right. And I'm going to generate histogram using a procedure called PROC univariate. So this is a very nifty uh, procedure in SAS. It does all the univariate, pulls out all the univariate. By uni means single. So single variate or single variable statistics uh, that we can. So over here we have to give the option var. So what are the uh, variables that we want to run it on? So I'm going to run it on all the five variables. Right. And I want to also generate the histogram. So I'll give another uh, argument, histogram. On all these five variables, press run. Now select this, press F3, right, and let it run for all the variables, and we get the graphs for all the five uh, uh, variables: read, write, maths, science, social studies, right. Now the problem with this particular uh, graph or his graphical method is, while it's very nice to look at. It doesn't allow me to easily compare with each other which of them have a larger dispersion when the ranges are pretty much similar. All of these observations are, uh, you know, starting from uh, late 20s, early 30s and going up to the, uh, you know, mid to early 80s even, right? It doesn't allow me one method or one particular measure which of these variables has got a higher dispersion, no matter which particular tool I look at. And I've skipped rattle, so I'll generate it on rattle again. In Rattle, I've got the data set imported. I've again put read, write, math, science, social studies into the input. 
press execute in the explore I click on the distributions option in the distribution we have got the option for histogram I'm going to select all of the variables read write math science social studies press execute right? and there we have it we've got uh, we've generated the histogram for all of them it's, let, it's not rendering as of now let, there it's rendered right so we've got it for read write math science right and it looks pretty nice though some problem in my computer it is well r is open source so sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so we'll leave it at that it's failing to render anyhow i'll uh, bring it up later now we've generated the histogram for all of these but it still doesn't allow me to easily measure so, so if i look at the histogram for read over here right and i look at the histogram for maths right can i figure out which has got a higher dispersion visually looking at it it's very difficult so this is where we bring in standard deviation this is a quantitative measure of figuring out how much dispersion occurs in a particular variable 